Well, hello. Uh, I'm Igor Olinsky, founder at tokenomics.com, the TNKMCS.com. I am here uh, doing an interview for the Israel Crypto Conference 2022. And uh, my guest right now is uh, Joshua Miller. Josh works for IOHK, which is responsible for the Cardano blockchain. Josh, how are you? Doing well, how about yourself? Doing good, doing good. Well, um, we're gonna say hello virtually to everyone at the conference, uh, but I wanted to take a few minutes just to chat with you about where you see the industry going. Uh, obviously, we've had a little bit of a tumultuous time the last week or two, uh, and wanted to just get your pulse on um you know how you got into this space and uh whether it's a long-term play for you sure sure well along with where the market's been lately uh you know we've seen this sort of thing before we have a lot of growing pains uh, adoption pains regulation pains and it's just part of the market finding its feet um you know sustainable uh and really making sense out there is something that we're all really gunning for uh, and projects out there are coming and going, realizing who are the good actors, who are not, uh, and you know, getting these options in out there. As a lot of uh, L ones are starting to really get up and running, we're seeing L twos come out, utilities to them, NFTs are, are hitting big time. Uh, so we're really just finding what we can do with these things and where we can take them. Uh, that's further than the path that was really originally conceived. You know, as far back as 2008, 2009. Uh, you know, deployment of Ethereum in, in you know 2013 or so. Uh, so it's really an evolution for this market and we really all just have to, uh, be there for it, be smart, make good decisions and do research. Great. So you mentioned L ones and L twos. That's for those that don't know layer one, uh, protocols like, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, and then there are layer two protocols, which are like Polygon and, uh, Arbitrum. And so for you you're working on primarily on a layer one protocol is that correct right iohk was uh, uh founded by the co-founder of ethereum charles hoskinson and he went off and built cardano uh so everything that we do at io has to do with uh, offering products and services around the cardano blockchain currently so when it comes to layer one technologies cardano is one of the more current or newer ones i should say in many cases people consider it the third generation meaning that Bitcoin was the first generation. Some things were not considered. It, it just basically became a store of value. Layer twos like Ethereum uh, came out and allowed people to add programmability to the blockchain, which uh, basically allows for smart contracts, dApps, DeFi, NFTs, uh, fungible tokens, things like that. Where does uh, generation three like Cardano come in and basically take it to the to the next level to the future well it's definitely more around security uh sustainability and interoperability uh that's one of the fun those are the fundamentals of cardano itself uh being a third generation blockchain everything is very research driven so we've taken what bitcoin did coming out the market ethereum did coming out the market of course having first mover advantage and we expanded on this where is this going to be in 50 years what's going to come online in 50 years and how can we build a blockchain that's going to be able to rise to that occasion um, especially using a protocol uh, that's a lot more sustainable and uh, eco-friendly with proof of stake. Uh, just little considerations like that, that's very research driven uh, is very much what we do. Okay, so basically the third generation of blockchain is one that's going to consume a lot less energy than is currently being consumed uh, by the proof of work systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And there's also going to be a bigger concern for security, it seems, because as we're finding out with uh, various different projects that are ongoing right now, um, you can't necessarily count for many transactions that are uh, down the line or have occurred in the past. So Cardano, as I understand, uses a different model for this, and that makes sure that uh, you're not just hoping that everything uh, ends up in the best place, but you're actually accounting for it in the technology. Is that correct? Right. We really have to think around scalability and interoperability. Uh, when it comes to those measures because we don't know what the future is going to bring 
Uh, whereas we, you know, nobody could have seen that NFTs were just going to take off like that. And now we, every network has heavy loads of NFTs uh, coming online and working with big, big brands worldwide. Uh, how they can be, uh, you know, put into anti counterfeit, track and trace, all these different systems. You can't anticipate as of right now. So we have to make sure that the blockchain is secure and is scalable to rise and meet those demands as new uh, young entrepreneurs and uh, business owners out there are looking for new ways to expand their business or to kick up new businesses and industries. Great. So you mentioned some of these big projects. Can you uh, can you dive deeper into perhaps one or or two of those that you've been involved in? Oh, sure. I worked with a project called Clay Nation uh, that does NFTs on Cardano and have also kicked up plots of land in the metaverse. And Clay Nation uh, teamed up with Snoop Dogg uh, to release a special uh, Big Nation collection. And we helped them more on the uh, uh, marketing and guidance side to get them connected, to get them more uh, intricated into the community, uh, not just as a general, but as the industry as a whole. Uh, showing that you don't have to be committed to just one chain. It's not so much about the chain, it's about the technology. Uh, and that was the message behind what we did with Snoop. Uh, because as he goes off and he has things uh, in Sandbox and he has things on Ethereum, OpenSea, Cardano is a contender in that as well because there's a whole audience to reach there. There's a whole market to reach there. And there are different things that you can do everywhere. Um, you know, another one off the bat is just the introduction uh, that we've seen just your typical uh, normal companies come into. Like Akamai right now uh, is running an NFT auction on Artano. They're not typically Web3, but they are, you know, web related. Um, and being able to guide and help them web three and help them to get their toes wet uh, and really start to explore what these things can do and give them a soft meaning uh, for where they can take this in the future is a great test case and use case that can uh, have long term benefits for the ecosystem and industry as a whole. OK, so uh, as I understand it, they're also non uh, let's call it non metaverse or non social nft use cases as well right so for like uh as i understand you guys are working with dish network on 5g um what is what is something like that entail that's right nfts can be used in any case uh depending on what you want to do with them they're not just about art uh, they're not just about utility they're also about people engagement and that's what we use for dish network trying to kick off their 5g initiative uh, launching in las vegas uh, here in the beginning of May, is that along with their special uh, uh, phone that they use, a Motorola, uh, and along with their Genesis app that's supposed to act as customer service, uh, help people get uh, connected and get used to using 5G, we also put in uh, to their rewards tier system, not just getting Bluetooth speakers, I think, that we normally see. You know, I go to King Supers and I get points for gas. So, you know, you fly, you make a flight, you get miles. We help them put NFTs into it because it's more of a customer engagement. People have something else to look forward to that's not common. Um, and it also helps with the engagement because NFTs down the road can be programmed to do different things. On Cardano itself, you can just do a snapshot of your user's wallets, and then you can open up something that would be available to people holding uh, specific policy IDs. Uh, and those are ways that we can collaborate with uh, you know, non-crypto uh, companies in telecom space or in any space, really. We can go into the grocery chains. We can go into um, you know, your mom and pop shots to make that uh, engagement more special. Uh, and to really open up the roads for this is what you can do with it now, but you can take this down the road in the future. And if you have more ideas or you see something on the horizon or something specific comes out, you're not locked into creating something completely new and spending that money and spending a lot of money to spin that up. You have your key moments and your key engagement items already there in place. That's excellent. Now, as I understand, Cardano is also known for working with various different uh, countries or nation states or regions. Uh, specifically doing a lot of work in Africa. Um, where where does this uh, blockchain in general or Cardano sp specifically play a role in digital identity and, and uh, creating a credentialing system so that people can uh, prove that they've had some sort of experience or education or otherwise? Absolutely. In Africa, it's very important to own your identity and be able to carry it around because of the legacy systems that are already in place. With uh, digital identity, you can therefore take it to any employer and show that, hey, this guy has a forklift certification. Or you can show that, you know, this person really did go to this university and has this degree. And then you can also use it uh, to upscale and uh, contribute to what they can do uh, for access to the nation. You can get access to microfinancing. 
Uh, you know, therefore, you can also uh, get access to telecoms. You can get access to services that would normally be a real hassle to get to and systems that are still very much paper-based and carry that identity around with you anywhere you go uh, so that you have those advantages and you have those uh, opportunities. That's great. So final question. Uh, this last week has been quite tumultuous with the stable coins. And I understand that um, Cardano's has a stable coin coming out called Jed, uh, but it's it's different than um, the algorithmic coins that we've been seeing through Terra and Luna and, um, you know, th that have had some potentially some architectural issues or drawbacks. Uh, how much can you tell us about that? Well, our scientists and engineers have researched stablecoins for years now. Uh, one of our engineers, our, our lead engineer, uh, Bruno Paleo down in Australia, has been working on JED for a long time. So he's studied many instances of these and has uh, looked at their weaknesses and looked at uh, where they could go wrong and has really built in uh, collateralization, uh, you know, uh, peg demand, all kinds of things that you can do with it. And Jen is an exciting project that we're launching with uh, Cody out of uh, Israel uh, with Shahaf at the helm there. And Jed is really going to stand out stablecoin wise. And I invite anybody to research Jed, D J E D, and really take a look at the white paper and the instruments that it uses for itself to come to your own conclusions. Right. Well, that's, I think, sage advice for anyone in the crypto space is do your own research. Uh, learn about what it is that you're potentially investing in. Make sure you understand it because there are a lot of risks. Joshua Miller, thank you so much from IOHK for joining us and, and talking to us. And um, hopefully next time we'll meet in Israel in person. Definitely. Would love to. Thank you. Take care.